So what is the best live streaming setup for YouTube Live and Facebook if you want your content to stand out and really have a higher quality than most of the stuff that you see out there? In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down all of the gear that I've been using lately, coming up. Hey, what's up, Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of tips and strategy videos as well as tech gear reviews, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, I'm gonna list out all of the various pieces of this live streaming setup in the YouTube description below, as well as any of the accessories or things that I forgot. So check those out at any time. Let's jump into the video. So one thing is for sure, you need to be live streaming. I hope that you already have been because right now live video is on fire. It's one of the best ways to build your influence and ultimately your income and your impact as well using platforms like YouTube Live, Facebook Live, or even other platforms like Periscope and these other live streaming opportunities. But how do you create content that's really distinct and stands out from what everybody else is putting out? In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down a premium setup. Like this is no joke, it's not a budget setup, but on a practical sense, I wanna say up front, you can get started with what you have. Keep in mind that you can always go live from your phone. Like most smartphones can produce awesome live video. And then secondly, the budget setup that I used for years consisted of this Logitech webcam. This is the uh, HD Pro C920. It's about a $60 here in the US webcam. And you could use any kind of USB mic like this. Just plug it into your laptop or a computer. This is a blue snowball, it's $50. And so you can live stream and then using free software like OBS or Google Hangouts, you can start live streaming with some decent quality right away without breaking the bank. And I did that for years. That was basically my setup. However, I recently just upgraded to like the killer setup. Like this thing is lethal, but it's quite, uh, it's a lot more expensive as well. So let's dive into my new setup. Okay, so let's break down this live streaming setup piece by piece, starting with the camera. Yes, I've been live streaming on a Panasonic GH5. Now, before you say anything, is that camera overkill for live streaming? Yes, we didn't just get it just for live, we also got it for slow motion, for some short film type content or social media content that we'll be creating. But the main thing that it uses on a day-to-day -day basis is this, is for live streaming. And I got it for a couple different reasons. One, I wanted to have a distinct look, and so a lot of the cameras that people recommend are camcorders. Most camcorders can't have like a real wide look to them. And so I kind of wanted a more YouTuber vibe while streaming live. And you could probably imagine why that would be cool, right? You'd probably want similar things like being able to stream off a DSLR, in this case, a mirrorless camera. So that's the first piece. And that body comes in at $2,000 here in the US. And then the lens I have is the 12 to 32, super crispy lens. And at 12, it's nice and wide, but you can also zoom in. And I love the ability to be able to have different focal lengths by just being able to reach up right above my monitor here and do that. That's another $1,000. So already we're at a $3,000 setup to start. And one piece of kit that I would recommend is the continuous power solution for the Panasonic GH5. And it actually comes in two pieces. You actually buy the battery piece and there's a little uh, rubber door that opens on the GH5 to let you plug the wire in. And then you also buy the power supply piece. And it's really expensive if you buy the OEM stuff from Panasonic. I think together, that was another $150. Now there is an aftermarket one, but for me, I was like, man, I'm already spending a lot of money to buy a camera that's this nice. I don't wanna go cheap on the continuous power that I'm gonna be using for years to come. And so this allows it to, you don't need to change batteries. It's just continuously powered. Whenever I wanna just flip it on or off, the power is just always plugged in to the wall. Okay, the second piece of gear for this setup is the USB microphone. And for that, we have the Rode NT-USB. Now I have a whole video out about this. I'll link it up on the YouTube card as well as in the description below. But I wanted a good solution for the desk here. And the boom arm was pretty important because one of my goals for this live streaming setup was that it would be quick and easy to just flip on and, and flip off. So in the past, I would actually carry a stand in and out. But I realized I just wanna be able to sit down 
you know, turn the camera on, open up the software and just get going, just get creating content. This setup is gonna be used for years to come. So I'm probably gonna create over a thousand videos and live streams just from this setup. So I want it to be right. I want it to be fast, I want it to be solid. And this is a great mic for that. I can move it to all kinds of different locations depending on where I'm sitting or positioned. Good audio quality, super easy to use, a solid choice. All right, the next piece of this kit is this ReadyCam table type top tripod. Now, I love this tripod. It was actually kind of hard to search around on BH and Amazon to find a solid tripod like this. But specifically, I wanted this to be able to go behind the computer monitor. And so that's a great tripod. Maybe you would want to use it for something else. It's a kind of a cool find. And that comes in at $30 here in the US. Okay, now we've got our mic, we've got our camera, we've got our tabletop tripod, we've got continuous power going to the camera, and now we need to plug this into our capture card. So you need an HDMI cable, but here's a power tip for this particular setup. I have these little uh, L brackets, and these are actually adapters by K from Cable Matters, and these are in a eight bucks for two pack, but it's huge because as you can see, it keeps the HDMI cable allowing you to still see the LCD screen, which is something I liked. I didn't want to just monitor myself on the actual feed that I could see on my computer. I also wanted to be able to see the screen and tap adjustments for the camera and whatnot. So that gets the HDMI cable out of the way. So that's a huge power tip if you're using a camera with the flip screen and you want to use the HDMI. Okay, so then next up, we have the HDMI cable and that goes over to our PC and inside the PC is a Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K capture card. So yes, I've actually been HD streaming mostly because I don't really want to put out 4K, but I did want to future-proof my setup. And so the GH5 can push out that 4K signal with the full-size HDMI output, and the card could also take 4K content. And so I've already tested it on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not really streaming in 4K, but that is what's nice about this is it is ultimately a 4K setup. And so that Blackmagic capture card, comes in at $190 here in the US at the time of making this video. It's been super solid, no dependability issues or anything. And so if you have a PC and that allows you to put PCI cards in it or PCI Express, you know, any capture card, if it has good reviews, should work. But in this case, it's the Intensity Pro and it's been working great. Okay, so that brings us to the PC. So this is a custom PC build from Computer Upgrade Kings. So you can kind of go there, you can start with a case and the kind of a baseline of components and add other pieces if you want. This is 64 gigabytes of RAM, i7 processor with four gigahertz speed. So it's a very good computer. Now this PC itself came in, came in around $2,100 here in the US. And I actually have a whole video out about it. It's probably a lot cheaper now because it's um, maybe six months old, but I'll link that up on the YouTube card in the description below if you want to actually see the details about this PC. I also like Computer Upgrade Kings because you can get some high performance machines for a little bit more of a budget price than you would pay elsewhere and you can do customization to them. But that is sort of one of the most important things for live streaming. You just wanna make sure you have enough processing power. You wouldn't need to like completely obliterate the specs. Like this is kind of overkill, but if you do wanna stream 4K, you don't wanna be right on the edge. You wanna have a lot of processing power to be able to handle multitasking and things like that. Okay, so the camera through HDMI plugs in that capture card into the PC, which does all the work. But now let's talk about the software. And so there's a couple different softwares for live streaming. I um, used OBS for a while, which is a free software. It had a lot of issues with syncing of the audio and the video on this setup. Now, one thing that could kind of solve that problem if maybe you're working on live streaming things is that I thought about just putting a shotgun mic on the GH5. That way the audio could come off the camera as well as the video and just stream right from that. That definitely would have been a solution with some simpler software, um, but I definitely wanted to use a separate USB mic. There was some syncing issues and um, the solution to that was vMix. That's what I've been using the most. And so vMix, uh, in fact, a lot of this setup was influenced by uh, David and Luria from Live Streaming Pros. I'll actually link to them in the description below. They helped me pick out all this gear and really sent me down this path. They are the experts when it comes to live streaming. But they recommended vMix and it's been amazing. It's been relatively easy to use. 
and I've had no audio syncing issues. Everything looks great. I have, I've had no crashing issues. And so I've really been falling in love with it. And what's pretty cool about vMix is you actually can do a 60 day trial free. I'm actually still in my trial period. And then if you only stream HD, it can be as cheap as like 60 bucks. But if you wanna push it to 4K or have a lot of extra features, it can go up to like 300 bucks or even 700. But what's cool is just a simple version of it is pretty affordable. Okay, so that covers the software, but one question you might have is how do you actually turn that software on so that the feed goes live to Facebook or YouTube? And vMix actually has some tutorials that walk you through step-by-step -step how to set those up. So I'll link to those in the description below. Okay, next up is a light source. Now, if you're gonna be going live streaming, from a setup like this on a continual basis, you're definitely gonna to wanna to invest in some static lighting that's just really easy to just like reach up, flip the switch, and you're good to go. So this is actually kinda of like a beauty dish from DVE Store. It's about a $300 light. I like it, but I think you could get you know, research a lot of different lighting. Obviously your space is gonna matter. It's probably important to note that this is a larger desk. So you can see there's space here, but then there's another foot and a half that gives a space to put a, a little lighting stand back there, as well as the, uh, you know, tripod and the camera and things like that. But definitely include some sort of a light source for your pro live streaming setup. All right, next up is dual monitors. Let me flip this off. And this is actually pretty important for live streaming. And here's why. Because I use live streaming most for teaching, whereas I'm on camera, but then I like to show like a presentation, I like to have one monitor dedicated to the screen that I'm sharing. And so when I found with live streaming, if you got your software and then you're also trying to see people's comments and then maybe you also have your slides and things like that, I found that dual monitors is pretty essential. And you can pretty much use any kind of monitors, but um, I, put, I usually put uh, vMix right here. I've got my PowerPoint right there. And then I usually will open up YouTube comments down here, over here. So that's kind of my dashboard that I work from and then whatever is over here is um, I could put on screen so I could just show different slides from PowerPoint or I could show off an, um, an internet uh, site and walk people through YouTube analytics or anything that I might be teaching. And then finally, this isn't really part of the hardware side of things, but just kind of a tip in my live streaming process is as I said, I like to teach the most on live streaming. So a lot of times I'm creating slide decks and for me, I use PowerPoint, but one of my favorite resources is actually called Graphics River and Envato Market. So you can just go to Graphics River and I'll link it up in the description below and you can go to the presentations and they've got Google Slides, keynote templates and PowerPoint templates. And what I found is one way to level up kind of the branding, the quality, the vibe of a presentation is just spending 10 or 15 bucks to buy a presentation that looks really clean and really pro and then just add all my information in there first. And so basically it does the heavy lifting for you. You can uh, research different color schemes and all kinds of things like that. And so I found that that puts a little bit extra in the stream quality if you just design some nice slides to go along with it. All right, so that pretty much covers the gear side of the setup. But you know, one of the big challenges with live streaming is not just the production value, but it's also coming up with the content and holding people's attention. So if you actually want to see my best tips on how to get more views and grow your audience using live streaming and live video, I'll link to a training video about that on the YouTube card and in the description below. Question of the day, what are you currently live streaming with? Let me know in the comments section below. And also let me know if you have any questions or feedback about this setup. I would love to connect with you in the comments section. So thanks for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you wanna check out my video with my best tips for getting more views and growing your audience with live streaming, you can click or tap right there. If you wanna check out another Think Media video, just click or tap right there. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it and we will talk soon.